in Israel, hundreds of thousands of people are protesting a new judicial reform, uh, which would change the way how the government work. Uh, do you think the reform is anti-democratic, or as many people say, is it pro-democratic? Or what's your viewpoints on it? What I, I genuinely believe is that the problem in Israel is the electoral and political system. Yeah. And the, to look at the judiciary so in what's isolation a, so from just, the rest of the system. Just to break that down. And the, re- the reason I say that is this. Um, if the, ju- the, ju- the judges are overstepping the mark, which mm-hmm. a, number of, a lot of people in Israel feel they are, okay, then you still need to replace that with checks and balances in the system which are institutionally built into the system, holding the executive to account and also protecting the rights of min- minorities. That's what happens in any decent civilised society, including our own here in the United Kingdom. So looking at the judiciary in isolation from the rest of the system is a mistake. What Israel really needs to do is have an honest debate about its, its electoral system, which means you will always have coalition governments, you will always have extremes and disproportionately influential and powerful, uh, and you have a system where, by the way, MKs are not accountable to constituents, they're accountable to political parties. They have no accountability to constituencies uh, whatsoever. So my view is... Uh, that if uh, BB or if other Israeli politicians want to have an honest debate about what needs to change, that's the big picture. This whole dispute is a proxy for so many other things. The country is horribly polarised, which is terrible from a Jewish perspective. Having such le- such a level of disunity is very, very bad and corrosive. And I think what both camps need to be doing is reaching out to each other, listening to each other, and looking for co- the common territory. I think the president, President Herzog, in that respect, is doing a fine, fine uh, job. Um, but this is a proxy for so many other things. Uh, the right believe, that although, they've, although they've run the country for 20 years politically, all the institutions continue to be controlled by the left. Uh, secular Jews believe that this government wants to change Israel into a theocratic uh, state with far more restrictions placed on people's freedom of choice in terms of their religious uh, expression. Other people believe that the Prime Minister is doing this purely to save his own skin in terms of the legal woes uh, that he uh, faces. Uh, But the big problem, the big picture problem is this. It's the enemies of Israel that are rubbing their hands with glee. The Iranians are now running amok in Syria and in Lebanon on the borders, okay? Not to mention we all talk about their nuclear capacity and the fact they are potentially very near to developing that nuclear capacity. What we don't talk about anywhere near as much as we ought to is that they control militias uh, in Lebanon, in Syria. Uh, We know about Gaza, yeah, which have the capacity to wreak mayhem. We've already seen the most horrendous uh, terrorist attacks uh, look at what happened with the D family, absolutely beyond words. That family's lost a mother, uh, two daughters, uh, two sisters, to an indiscriminate, her- horrible terrorist attack. And Eddie, this is an opportunity for, for me to say to you that on Wednesday night at Manchester's Yom Ha'atzmaut event, uh, Rabbi D will be addressing us live from Israel, and we're very honoured to have him uh, there. He's, a, he's been a remarkable, his, what he's been saying since his personal tragedy has been absolutely remarkable in terms of the dignity and the courage that he has shown. Um, but Israel, it's, it, it, this is a, these judi- judicial ref- reforms are exposing this deeply divided society where not enough people are trying to build bridges and heal wounds and bring people together and remind each other about what they have in common and remind each other about the threats that are posed to every Israeli, irrespective of whether they are religious or non-religious, left or right. And, you know, Jewish people through their history need to remember what has happened when Jews have been divided. When Jews have been divided, there have been horrendous consequences. So my plea is to look at the political system in its entirety, uh, propose a radical reform of that system, maybe put those reforms uh, to a, a referendum, by the way, right? not just look at judicial issues uh, I- in isolation. But my big plea to those on the left and those on the right is to reach out to each other and find a way of achieving some level of compromise and unity, because that's what Israel needs more than anything else right now. So I'm always um, hesitant from um, you know, an outsider's point of view, and also over here in England, giving um, you know, commentary on the politics of, is, of, of what happens in Israel. But of course, as, as people of the diaspora, it's in our interests to see Israel be successful, do very well, stable and um, 
you know, be celebrated as a great democracy in in in, in its in its location, and um, you know, be be a successful state. Um, I suppose Israel, you know, in its modern state, uh, since it was in it, it was formed in in the forties, you know, it's still a young state in that regard, politically. Um, also, we have proportional representation there, which has created the the coalitions, as Ivan has said, um, that has caused so much um, just um, polarization within within society there. And I think you know that it's very important that the like the president has played a very important role in keeping stability there. The inst- the institutions of the president. The Supreme Court and the Prime Minister and this can has it need to be still protected. Good checks and balances in place. Um crossing over, trying to make reforms, yes, something does need to be done. I, I am in favour of a maybe Israelis coming to an idea where they could come up with uh, referendum proposals to try and look at how they can protect the institutions of state and the judiciary. But not for minority groups to kind of ride in roughshod and try to push through reforms that suit them for maybe their own political kind of agendas on the day. Um, but remember, the Israelis are a robust lot, and they and they and they and they argue and they and they debate very robustly, and that's a sign of a good democracy as well. Now I know when we we worry about like. Our enemies and what they, you know, they see people being divided and how they can utilize, they could use use that as a, you know, an opportunity opportunity to to attack, but it's at least the countries is having an open debate, at least the reforms have been put on pause, everyone is talking about it, hopefully when when elections come or a, a future referendum was to happen, people will go out and they will vote, unlike in this country where. We have a local election coming up, and only thirty percent of people are voting in their in their in their wards. So, I don't. I I'm I'm much more optimistic for for Israel. It's been through a lot more worse than Bibi's reform or proposed reform of the of of um, of the of Supreme Court. So I, I I have faith in Israeli people, and I have faith in the, in the, in their democracy, and. Um, but I, uh, but obviously, I want I want a good outcome, and I want the state to be even more stronger and more successful after as, as a result. Mm-hmm. I mean, what distresses me, I suppose, you could say, my political life, I've largely been of the left, not the far left, but the centre left. But now I am also a religious Jew, and what really upsets me is the level of venom and mistrust between people on the left, in inverted commas and people who are religious in Israel. And uh, by the way, there are some crossover people between those two things, but there's not that many. Um, And this mistrust and sometimes venom and hatred is extremely unhealthy. Uh, And I would say to David that whilst he's right about in the past, Israel's been a vibrant democracy and some of these debates have been healthy, this is not a healthy set of circumstances in Israel right now. It really isn't. There is a tremendous amount of mistrust as I say, hate between people uh, if I may who, say, who, who, who almost yeah. seem to see themselves, although they live in the same country, mm. they seem to see themselves living in parallel universes with polar apart sets of values. That's now, not, I, I personally that's not feel, just in Israel. I, I personally feel that yeah. they have far more in common than they realise. Yeah. Uh, and if you had leaders that drew attention to that and tried to build bridges and heal some of those wounds... Uh, within the Israeli system, uh, then I think you could change some of that. I'm really optimistic about that. But that isn't happening, David. The opposite I, I, is happening. I, no, I, of course, I'd like people to talk more, come together, grown-up politics, where, where you know, we don't... But our system, our, our democ- democratic system, pushes an adversarial um, approach. We have to have opposing views. We have to try and stick to those views. We have to hold our flags by the mast. Obviously, we need, we need grown-up politics. We need people to... Come together and and have level heads and not not hot heads on in this situation. Um, politics across the world is polarized, not just in Israel. 
And unfortunately, Apart from America. yes, in America, it's happening Dave's here. Right. It's happening the everywhere. The stakes are higher. The stakes are higher. And like our very first question, it's survival, or it's it's kind of cancel. You know, it's either a cancel culture, or it's but the days of compromise and moderation. Mm-hmm. That doesn't, my, that doesn't make news anymore. But does my it? argument is, yeah. we, my argument, and you're absolutely right what you said. My argument is, we need leaders who are bridge builders and healers, yes. and not dividers. And I think too often people are celebrating leaders who deliberately whole pitch is to be divisive and to divide people. And I, I think it's extremely unhealthy. And I think you can have that view, whether you're on the left or the right, or in the centre, you could have the view that this is extremely unhealthy for the world. I think BB's generally been quite... It brings people together, generally, for the past uh, 15 years that he's been in power, over, over the 15 years. But it's just this, this coalition that he's brought together mm. isn't. I, I don't think that's too early. I, I think the part of the problem is yeah. that he is hated by so many on the left who don't... I'll be honest with you. Yeah. The flaw in their position is the right legitimately won the election, under the rules of the Israeli political system, and he is legitimately the Prime Minister of the country, yeah. right? And a lot of people on the left do not accept that, right? And they're wrong, okay? They're wrong. It's undemocratic to have that view, okay? Yeah. But they're also... That doesn't mean they're wrong to say he's been there too long. Maybe it's time he stepped aside. Maybe it's time for somebody else to emerge in Likud as leader. It doesn't mean that's all wrong. No. But they are, they are undoubtedly... So, so you're wrong. It, it, sorry. You may not be wrong that he's tried, but that's not the perception of yeah, the no, other no. side of the yeah. argument, is no, it? He, yeah. be- he has become the lightning rod for division, yes. OK? Unfairly or fairly, he has. Um, and it's a very complicated situation. But I, I, I would say, and I want to say this, I, I probably if it is, wouldn't necessarily vote for him, but he's the legitimately elected Prime Minister of the country. Yes. And there are a lot of people marching in those demonstrations who, mm. who don't want to accept that. And that's wrong as well. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Is there anything else? Or should we I'm going to know. I'm going to agree with that. I think I'm going to leave that where it is. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks so much for joining, David and Ivan. Thank you. Thank you.